I am James Swanick, and today we are talking to a lovely woman by the name of Chanel Bedelacqua from Frisco, just outside of Dallas, Texas, who has been pretty much four months alcohol-free, and then she went back to having a drink or four, not, <laughs> not, not four drinks on the one, one night, but like on four different occasions she had some drinks, and now she's back on track and going alcohol free again. So we're going to hear from Chanel. We're going to hear her story, but just a little bit of context. She's a consultant and an advisor for startup medical companies. She has a a very successful business there. She helps build sales teams of those startups. Uh, And she and her husband are actually winemakers by hobby. They have a hobby as a winemaker. So pretty interesting to have someone who makes wine as a hobby and then chooses to go alcohol free. Uh, so we're going to hear about that. Uh, Chanel is also a mother of six, including twins, triplets, mm-hmm. and an eight-month-year-old, or an <laughs> eight-month-old, I should say. <laughs> so no wonder she's probably been driven to drink at times. <laughs> Chanel, lovely to have you here. How are you doing? Thank you, James. I'm doing wonderful. Terrific. Well, great. Um, first of all, how do you handle twins, triplets, and an eight-month-old? <laughs> with a nanny and a housekeeper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. Tell us about your kids. Um, okay, so my I have uh, twin daughters that are 12. I think they're 20. And um, I have a set of triplets that I had all five in diapers at the same time. The triplets are 10 and they're all girls. And then um, we thought we were done. and um, you know, moving on to the next, the next stage, the easier stage when they get a little older. And then we had a little surprise boy just recently. So he's eight months old, but he's a blessing and healthy and cute as can be. So no complaints. Yeah. That's a full house. Uh, That must've been quite a challenge having five kids, five kids in diapers. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You think Costco? Yeah. Two quarts. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know, but now imagine this, James, with five girl teenagers in the house. I mean, that's you know, it's it's that's the next stage. So yeah, we're Mario. Yeah. <laughs> and so as I understand it, uh your drinking habits um mm-hmm. maybe got to a point that that you weren't particularly happy with. You certainly were not an and and you are not an alcoholic or anything like that. It was just you know maybe your drinking habits were getting a little bit too much for your liking, and so you actually um, enrolled in my uh, Project Ninety program, which helps mm-hmm. business owners and entrepreneurs and professionals and retirees and you know people who consider themselves, I guess, natural high performers to get power back over their drinking. And you had um, a lot of success with that. You went four straight months alcohol free. And then you shared with me before we recorded here that you had a glass of wine on December 23rd, 2020, yeah. December 24th, Christmas Day. And then on Christmas Day, you said you experienced some anxiety. And then on New Year's Day, you had a glass of wine. And then since then, you've gone, nah, that's it. I'm, I'm going um, another 90 days from yes. here. So that that's the context of the discussion that we're going to have here today. So... Just tell us a little bit about you and your life in Dallas and what was going on with your drinking habits, you know, over a number of years leading up to the point where you went, you know what, I'm going to try and get this under control. Yeah. So, so the way that it's been with me, you know, I guess maybe 15 was whenever I first had a beer, I think that I remember. And I bartended and stuff all the way through college and always had fun with all that, but it never, that you did the normal college things. Right. And then when I got married at 27 and I mean, truly it's not, yes, we go out, we go, you know, have the weekend fun dinners, all that stuff. And, and it's normal, just normal drinking. It's nothing like major. I've never had a DWI or you know, we're not having marital problems because of all that. But my thing was, is when you're drinking every single day, right? If you ever catch yourself having, I don't care if it's one glass of wine, let's say you're cooking dinner and you open a glass of wine or 
you've been working all day and it's three o'clock and you're like, oh, I'm ready for a glass of wine, right? That is too much for me. Like if, if you're doing it every single day, it's not a good habit physically for your body. And I think just, it's not good for the kids to see that every single day. And whenever, um, let's say it, it's a Saturday afternoon, Saturday lunch or something, we go out to a restaurant. I don't want to always have to, and this was the way I was getting that you feel like you have to order a glass of wine to even relax, you know? And so I don't want my girls, especially the girls to think that they can't have fun without having a glass of wine or, you know, that we can't have any kind of social event without always having alcohol. And so my reason, and this is actually kind of funny, James, because when you and I talked last time and <laughs> you saw three different emails, I mean, I have, I watch your, your stuff for a while. I mean, several years, right? Probably, I think that's been over a period of time because I, all the time I have checked myself to make sure that it's not, that you can stop, right? It's just a matter of making yourself be okay this I'm doing it today and we're starting today and and then don't bend from that and so for multiple times I would do your your uh 30 day remember and I just would go a couple of days and I'm like eh, we'll start that later you know what I mean like especially after okay let's say you don't drink all week long and by Thursday you want to have a glass of wine then I would be like yeah okay I'll start that 30 day we'll start that again. And so it really wasn't until this project 90 that I was like, I've got to do this. And just, it's, I want to shift. I want a mental shift. And so that's kind of what led up. So you said that um, you wanted to be a great, I guess, role model for your children in relation to your uh, relationship to alcohol is what I heard. It's like, you're wanting your daughters to be able to understand that they can have fun without the drinking. So does that mean that you yourself were relying on the drinking to have fun and, and to relax? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that it can become a habit, right? Like the, the part of the relaxation of being done for the day. All right. Like, especially too, that was the other thing with COVID and this is a good thing, but with COVID, you know, we're in the house now, are we, you know, the majority, we're not out in offices anymore. Like, I mean, I do calls with different offices all day long, but it's like this face to face or I mean, uh, zoom. And so when you're done, it's like, ugh, I'm finished. I'm going to go in the kitchen, get a glass of wine, you know? So it wasn't, I, I think it just became a habit of that's when you're relaxed. That's when you're not working. And especially with me, I'm a workaholic. I mean, it doesn't seem like I'm ever not working because I enjoy it, you know, and I don't mind answering a phone call here, there, text messages back and forth. It's so, so that is like, I think just the way that wine is relaxing, it's chill. You know, we just sit down have a glass of wine or whatever. And yeah, it's, I guess I was depending on it a lot. Yeah. Just to, to be the, my downtime. And you said what you're talking about wine. Is it red wine or white wine? Red wine. I'm a Malbec Cabernet. Yeah. Love it. And how much wine would you drink sort of at the end of a normal work day? Probably two glasses, truly. Two. Mm -hmm. I don't ever like to finish a bottle. I'll get in trouble for that. (laughs) (laughs) So probably so probably a couple glasses of red wine each yeah. night and every night. Is that right? Is that fair? Probably. Yeah, right. but it didn't start. It wasn't like that for, I mean, you have to think I was pregnant, right? So my baby's only eight months old. So, I mean, it wasn't like that when I was before I had the baby or right after I had the baby or during the pregnancy, when it started being like, okay, Chanel, and I'm sitting here thinking why you have this amazing little baby that is just so precious and you just want to spend time with them. You know, and then I was like, if anything happened, one day up night I was sitting in the rocker and I was in there about to put, I'm just putting him down and stuff. And I'm like, if anything happened, you have been drinking, right? And so it's like, I don't want that. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, well, when was the last time you went a full week without having a glass of wine? I'm like, it's been a long time. I mean, since, you know, after you quit breastfeeding, I'm like, balls to balls, let's go, you know, let's have some fun. 
And I, then I realized, I'm like, I don't want to be like this. Like, and not only that, but we stress ourselves out trying to get to the gym. You want to get back in shape and yet you're totally ruining it by drinking wine every night, you know? And mm-hmm. especially too, because James, like, I mean, I've been plant-based vegan for, I, I mean, I've had fish here and there over the past five years, but I mean, five solid years and I don't cheat on that. Don't, don't look back. I do not, you know, I mean, and so my thing was like, okay, how can I be like that? And yet you're still putting wine in your body and you're not getting what you want. Right. It just, it gets aggravating when you know, you're not being wise when you know what to do and you're not doing it. So, yeah. How did you feel the two glasses of wine a night habit was compromising areas of your life? Like other than just you wanted to be able to say that you could do it or beat it. And, you know, how did, what were other areas there where you thought, ah, for example, was it like irritability? Was it poor sleep? Was it lack of focus? Was it just you know, falling into the drift of life? Like what were some of the, the things that you noticed that you said were happening that inspired you to change? Um, one is memory. You know, it's like when I, I, and really I didn't even realize how bad it was until about month two of not drinking. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I can remember, like even today, you know, looking at different patient files, I was just looking at the reports and seeing these patient names. And I was like, Oh, that was so-and-so insurance. Let me look it up. You know what I mean? And I could remember what drugs that patient was on, what, what was, um, what was the insurance. And it's, I couldn't have done that when you're drinking, you don't, your memory is just not as, is you're not as clear, not as sharp, you know? And so that was definitely a, a huge, you know, thing as far as what you see the most improvement sleep. No, but I'm up constantly still with him, you know, so that I just can't even, I don't think that's fair to, <laughs> to judge that one right now. But um, yeah, mainly my memory and then just keeping, keeping um, trim because I was, t- I don't remember who in our group I was telling this, but I'm like, before this project 90 started, I took a bikini shot from the back. Right. And I've got all this cellulite and I'm like, ugh. 90 days later, I don't have cellulite. It's gone. Like, and I'm dead serious. I'm like, if it wasn't inappropriate, I'd post that for the whole group. <laughs> because it truly is gone. It's just amazing what it does for your body. The going alcohol free is a cellulite buster. A hundred percent. Yeah. Everybody should have to take a, a butt shot <laughs> and another one 90 days later. Just see, they don't have to post it, but just do it for yourself. It's pretty funny. So just before I ask you about what your experience was like during the 90 days alcohol free, uh, you, you shared with me that you, one of your hobbies is as a winemaker, you and your husband, you said, go to Tuscany yeah, uh, it, quite a lot in Italy. You're, of course, you have an Italian name there, Bevelacqua. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's the thing right there too, James. I mean, it, it's, if you're, that is my husband. And even when we met, you know, I mean, the things that attracted me to him is like the social aspect of, he loves to entertain. We entertain tons, you know, and that is, that's the hardest part. And, and as far as even like making wine, right. Going, I love to go to Italy Tuscany can be hard if you're sitting there forever and ever. And that's what the Italians do. Okay. But we go every single summer. And so all my kids are dual citizens and we go back and forth, but it's the Sunday pastas in the basement and doing all that. I love um, the culture. I love the, uh, just the familiness of it. And truly you cannot complain. I mean, it, it, the fact that we do all that stuff is wonderful, but it also, it is hard to say, okay, I'm not going to drink because you lose the identity of what you're, you're like, after a time period, you know, you're, you're like, why am I doing this? Because this is not who I am. You know what I'm saying? And so that has, that was the hardest thing to overcome. But as far as the challenge of 
if I go downstairs and go to, so we have a wine cellar and then we've got the wine cave and literally that's like where they make it. They've got all the, you know, barrels and all that. And, and it's fun. And I mean, and that's, that is what, what I've always known as far as what we do together. So that was, that's a little bit of a challenge, but. And how are you, how are you, how did you navigate that and how are you navigating that? So I think with Project 90, you want me to go into that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So so a couple things here. You may have to steer me back. Okay. When I joined the 30 days, that was not a big deal at all to me because there wasn't enough buy-in, right? It's, It's just not a big deal. With Project 90, it was enough to get your attention to be like, oh, I don't want to mess this up. I just paid for it, you know? And so that was how I navigated through the beginning of um, just sticking the path and staying with it. Then I think the community that you build and have, you really do start to, um, you want to cheer everybody on and, and it's so positive and just, it truly is. I mean, like, I really want to see everybody do so well in there, you know, and we all help each other in so many different ways. And so that helped me stay the course. Now, when I had a drink on the 23rd, that was because, and this is what I've learned from it and what I need to do differently moving forward. But it was because I looked at Project 90 as this is a time period right? It's not a lifestyle change. It's a a period of time. And how long am I going to do this now? What, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't, it didn't click. So I think, and it it has a lot to do with the identity of like what we were talking about before, as far as, you know, just the culture and all of that. Now I need to start asking myself, and this is something that I have to work on, but I mean, a lot of people, especially in different um, uh, like your one guy that did a podcast. I listened to that one. Um, Dominguez, um, Eddie Dominguez. Yeah. He's the okay, gentleman so- who lives down in Mexico and is, owns a restaurant down there yes. and there's uh, alcohol all around his restaurant. Yes. Right. And so his identity is okay. He's a restaurant owner. He's had bars, he's had restaurants for this long. Right. So it, it, that's what you have to overcome is okay. How can you start changing that question of not go from basically when somebody asks you, do you drink or do you want to drink? When do you make that switch that you identify in your own belief, your own mind that you're a non-drinker? How do you make that switch? Because when that happens, it will be permanent, just like I do with um, I don't eat meat. Right. So you're like, there's no way I'm going to eat that because you just don't do that. So that's what hasn't happened in these four months is, yes, I've been able to navigate my way through it. Yeah. But I don't think that I don't know how that switch is going to happen, because once it does, you will not go back. I don't know. Do do you just have to keep seeing more and more positive effects because you can't we've lived you know half your life 20 years of drinking you can't expect to have 20 years of experience in a great way not drinking in four months so you've just got to keep going the path until we build more and more and more positives that then all of a sudden in your mind you'll switch and be like i once you identify as that in your own head that's when I think the posit, uh, the um, permanent change will happen. Yeah, so I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that you still looked at doing Project 90 as a time, as a chunk of time. Yeah. So when the 90 days is up, or in your case, you went four months. I'm oh, and that was the other thing too, James. It's because I'm like, why am I so sad? Like after I after I had that drink or, you know, I'm like, I went four months. I'm feeling amazing. I said I was going to go three months. So why am I so upset at myself for having a drink? Right. And I'm with my husband and it's Christmas. So why am I so upset about this? But then I realized that the reason why I'm upset 
is because I want so bad to make a permanent change, but I haven't made the permanent change in my head. So how do I do that now? That's where the question comes because mm-hmm. that's, that's why, that's why I slipped up and I don't want it to happen again. Right. I want, I want this to be a permanent thing or I wouldn't have gone through all this in the beginning and I wouldn't have done it multiple times. Mm. So, so it's, that's just a, I don't know. It's something I've got to work through, I guess, but. Just a clarifying question. Why do you want it to be a permanent thing? I want it to be a permanent thing for so many reasons. Number one, do you know anything bad that comes from not drinking? Nothing. Number two, um, the fact that God has given me, it will make me curious. He has given me um, just so much that you can have with these girls. See, I don't mean little Santino. He doesn't even kill me. <laughs> I'm saying with my other girls, with, with my, you know, like when they leave my house and they have their own families, that is so many people that you can impact. That is at least six families that you will impact. And so it's like, you've got to do the right thing, you know? And, and I just, I want to be a good mama and just impact them in an amazing way. The other reason is truly everyone that I deep down respect are people who have their crap together, both physically, Physically, mentally, uh, with work, everything, they don't drink, you know? And if you look at, like, I'm one of these, uh, I mean, I, probably two or three years ago, I was Googling celebrities that don't drink. Um, thinking of people who run, like, different large companies who don't drink, you know? The things that I admire in other people is a, that it's not like you it's set out to say, oh, I want to admire not drinking. No, it's self-discipline in all areas, you know? And so that's, it's controlling yourself is the hardest thing to do as far as, and and discipline yourself, especially when you do have your crap together, right? There is no reason, no, no one's forcing you to do this. And so it's, it's a matter of how do you change your mindset to become the best person you can be? And so that's where I'm at. Beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing that with me and with us. Um, I, I want to offer you a little bit of, I don't know if coaching is the right word, but maybe just a little bit of perspective on this because you did say the word control, the phrase is um, controlling and disciplining. Mm-hmm. And what I want to offer, offer you is or invite you to consider is that um, you don't need to discipline yourself not to drink. You don't need to control yourself not to drink. I want to invite you to just choose to live a certain lifestyle and choosing that lifestyle is choosing alcohol free drinks It's choosing good food It's choosing great relationships. It's choosing exercise. It's choosing good nutrition. It's choosing connection with your family. It's choosing friendships, choosing, 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 choosing. Now a decision Mm -hmm. to control or discipline. Okay. Um, the word decide actually comes from a Latin term, decir, which means to cut away, like mm-hmm. to cut, to cut off. So a decision is like you're saying no to something. And in this sense, it seems to me like you're saying no to this alcohol. And so you have to control and discipline yourself in order to keep saying no to alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I want to invite you to stop doing that. And we're not depriving ourselves. We still have fun, right? We do, but it's still that mental thing that we've been conditioned. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I want to invite you to just choose what you will do because we've done, they've done lots of studies of the human brain and neuroscience tells us that it is so much easier for you to do something if you tell your brain to do something. Mm-hmm. But if you, then if you tell your brain not to do something, okay? So if you're telling your brain, don't drink, shouldn't drink, right, yeah. discipline yourself, Chanel, don't drink, 
Well, it's not self discipline. It is self discipline, though, James, because think about it. And all right, let's just talk in business for a minute. Do you admire the person that gets up at 4 30? Do you admire the person that gets up at seven o'clock? You're going to, you, it's just, that's what I know it takes in a lot of areas of life, right? And so that's when I say self discipline, it's not discipline in a bad way, it's making the right choices. And it is. You know, mm-hmm. and so it's yeah. Okay, so maybe we're we're both being a little bit pedantic on the words, but I get what you mean. I get your meaning. Okay, yeah. what I'm what I'm suggesting is instead of saying, here's what I'm saying in a nutshell: instead of saying no to alcohol, say yes to everything else. Instead of you making a conscious choice or a, or a decision, I should say, to cut alcohol out of your life, just make a choice to easily only ever drink sparkling water or whatever your non-alcoholic drink of choice is. What is your non-alcoholic drink of choice, by the way? Or what got, are I love this. I drink so many of these a day and I've heard this is bad for your teeth when you're drinking it like I am, but it's so good. Um, the apple cider vinegar, and you're not going to like this because I do add my stevia to it and my Splenda to it, but it's so good. It tastes like lime. Uh, that's fine. Just with the apple cider vinegar, it's so good to drink that, but you're right. It's not great for your teeth. So once you finish drinking it, just um, rinse your mouth out with water. That's all you got to do. So great mm-hmm. to drink it. Um, but then afterwards, just swirl some water around and um, get it off your and teeth. It, it's weird too, because my sister got me on these probably a year ago, even way before this, but um and at first I was like, oh, that's gross. Like I can do a shot of apple cider vinegar, but I don't want to sip on it all day. Right. And now it's like, I guess you've gotten used to it. And I actually like want it every single morning. Yeah. yeah it's, it's very good for controlling inflammation inside of the body. And it's also a hunger suppressant. So uh, if someone struggles with overeating or, or, you know, cravings for food, drinking apple cider vinegar can certainly suppress those cravings. James, tell me this. So yeah. As far as the choosing, okay, so if it's been four months and now I'm starting again on this path again, okay, how do you suggest, what is the best way for, for that paradigm shift, I guess, or for, for the, your inner person to start identifying as a non-drinker? How does that happen? Well, you, first, of all, you, well first of all, you make the commitment that that's just who you are. You identify as that and you set up your home and your environment and your life to reflect that. So you might remember from the program, we talked about um, buying yourself a bouquet of flowers and sticking them on a kitchen table or a living room table. So you have a visual representation of health and vitality. And I invite members to nurture those flowers for a week. So change the water every day, cut the bottom of the stems a little bit, try to make those flowers last a little bit longer. And every single day you walk past those flowers many Mm -hmm. times, maybe dozens of times. And each time you see that, you see that as a representation of your own body, of your own health and your own vitality. And that both subconsciously and consciously inspires you to make better choices throughout the day. I can't tell you how many times when I had a bouquet of flowers and I was looking at them when I lived in Venice Beach, California, that I would end up going to the Air One supermarket to go get some food and shopping. And I was in line. And of course, when you're in line before you go to the checkout, they have a big array of chocolate bars and candy and all this (laughs) kind of stuff, Um, albeit, you know, supposedly healthy candy, like vegan chocolates and things like that. But just simply standing in that line, whereas ordinarily I may have just said, oh, I'll just have get a little chocolate bar here. Because I saw the flowers, uh, you know, 30 minutes earlier, I was like, oh, no, I'm healthy. I'm I'm full of vitality. I I take care of myself. And I just I didn't reach for the chocolate bar. So that's just one. That's just one little example. The other thing is um, just an uh, an extension of visual cues is. um, you know, I have glass mason jars around around my home mm-hmm. and I have a water filtration system. And so uh, I like to have these glass mason jars, one on my on my bathroom sink, one on my on my office, one on my living room table, one on the you know, dining, <laughs> uh, one in the kitchen. Like they're, they're everywhere, right? We buy bottles of- My kimchi. husband would kill you because he grabs at me for leaving glasses everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I buy kimchi from the local organic farmer's market and, and they're in glass jars. And then when we finish the kimchi or, you know, sauerkraut, I guess is another way of saying it, 
um, we rinse them out and we use them as, as, as drinking glasses. So again, I'm seeing that each day and it just reminds me, drink lots of water, drink lots of water, drink lots of water. Um, uh, now you used the word discipline before, uh, and, and that's fine as long as it's you know, you're looking at it in a positive state as opposed to a discipline of saying no to something. Right. You know, I have a, I have a, a, a recurring um, session with a personal trainer. You know, three thirty of an afternoon on a, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, I do F45, which is a, a group training group uh, thing. I know when those sessions are on, and I put it in my calendar. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I wouldn't say I live and die by my calendar, but I have things on my calendar that keep me in check. Mm-hmm. And exercise is one of those. I'm not waking up and going, I wonder what time I'm going to exercise today. I know what time I'm going to, I'm going to exercise. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I stay, I was about to say the word regimented, but even that sounds quite forced, doesn't it? But I, I guess you could say I feel structured. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel structured. So, uh, so I'm stepping into this identity as a healthy, vibrant, connected person. I, uh, I proactively and intentionally have conversations with my romantic partner about our relationship. Like it's, I'm not just waiting for things to come up. Like I proactively have those conversations um, and, I, and I schedule it. Um, and I, and I schedule it with her to, to talk about that. You know, we have a date night, we, we go for walks, we do, we do certain things. We, we know when we're going grocery shopping, I, I t- used to not particularly enjoy going grocery shopping and she used to go, but then I realized it was a great way to connect. And plus I love, the, I love walking around a farmer's market, an organic farmer's market, because it gives me a real sense of community uh-huh. and connection because everyone's smiling and happy and it's kind of like neighbors. So um, I guess the, why I'm, you know, elaborating on this is because I'm stepping into an identity of someone who is living an alcohol-free lifestyle. I'm not stepping away from someone who drinks alcohol. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm just choosing. I'm just focusing on what I do. I'm focusing on the lifestyle that I lead, uh, and I'm stepping into that. Versus, don't go to the bar. Don't open the bottle of wine. Don't do this. I'm setting myself up to win. Mm -hmm. And by win, I mean I'm setting myself up to live the lifestyle that I am choosing, both with visual cues, for example, the flowers and the the glass mason jars and the water filtration system. Uh, And I'm setting myself up with systems, which is I have a regular exercise routine, have a regular talk about our relationship routine. I have a regular going on a date routine. I have a regular going grocery shopping and being part of a community routine. Um, I join business masterminds. I'm in two business masterminds. Very good. We have regular calls uh, mm-hmm. on there. I have a relationship coach. So I have a coach who I pay, who, who coaches me. I speak with her um, once every two weeks. Um, where I talk about my romantic relationship and relationships with my parents and my brothers and nieces and nephews and all those kind of things. So I've structured it. So I'm stepping into the identity of a well-rounded, healthy, alcohol-free lifestyle man. Mm-hmm. You see the, see the energy shift there? It's not depriving myself of something that I ordinarily would choose. It's not white knuckling it. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to do this for four months. And like at the end of it, I'll come out and then I'll go back to the way it was. No. I'm just choosing this lifestyle. I'm stepping into that and I, and I live that each and every day. See, and when you say set up your, your plate, okay, I have four bars in this house, literally downstairs. We've got, like I said, the wine cave and then the wine cellar and all that's fine. But really that doesn't bother me a bit. The bars don't bother me because I don't drink hard alcohol. Right. But I'm just saying the way it's a, it's for entertaining it's just entertaining so you just ha- that's why i'm saying with me it isn't going to change in the house it isn't going to change going to italy and sitting there forever and ever it's i have to mentally change in my head and and it start because look we could have freezers all over the place too it's exactly the same but it doesn't mean you got to go there <laughs> So I just have to, I, and I'm going to work on this and I'm going to get it because I'm not going to struggle with this all of my life. We're going to you start. Are the, you are the, the best alcohol-free hostess in the world. <laughs> and, we, and, you, you look, and you look the best 
when standing at the bar, entertaining people in your home while drinking your sparkling water and a piece of lime or whatever your non-alcoholic. And the is. olive juice. I love my olive juice with club soda. I know that sounds there you great, go. so good. There you go. And yeah. you are charming. And people ask you why you're not drinking and you smile with a big smile on your face and you let them know and you I joke about help. the fact that you're the only alcohol-free woman with a, a, a wine cave, a wine cellar and four <laughs> bars in her home. And you make fun of yourself and you have a little, you make fun of yourself and you're light and you're playful. Yeah. Yeah. And, so you, that's and that becomes your thing. Fun. And that becomes your thing. And then guests yeah. who are in your home and you're entertaining, you're offering them wine. Right? And don't stop I doing remember that. all the conversation. That's the best part, right? <laughs> <laughs> the next day when my husband's like, who are we going to dinner with? And I'm like, hey, honey, you said. <laughs> I, I would invite you just step into that role and like announce it right? and make a joke of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the only uh, non-drinking woman on earth who has three bars, a, a wine cave and a wine cellar in her home. And you get laugh and you giggle. And you, and then when people ask you about it, you just share authentically, not from a, oh yeah, I really want, you know, I just want to be a great role model for my kids or anything. No, you just say, oh, you know what? I tried it. I tried drinking. I tried not drinking. I prefer not drinking. Actually, I just feel I'm better. I feel good. And actually, I got to tell you, it's a cellulite buster, man. Yeah. Let me tell you, I had some cellulite and then I got rid of it. Plus, yeah. you know, I'm more present. I'm getting more work done, and I just feel good. But like, nah, it's all good. Go to town. Like, what would you like? I'll I'll get you a wine. Would you like a wine? Wine's great, isn't it? I remember we went to Tuscany. It was beautiful. It's incredible. We've still got a massive cellar in the house. I haven't touched it in two years, but it's there. See what I mean? <laughs> See how the energy is very playful and light. It's not this dark and heavy thing. It's you just being you, fun, mm -hmm. and choosing to be fun even with this attractively mm. packaged poison which is how i refer it to alcohol all around you no even with, even with an attractively packaged poison production line in your home <laughs> even like making wine <laughs> you can still be fun and playful about right. it and we have that a lot. i mean truly and that's you know even when i emailed you that day i was like it's amazing because if you go through your phone and anyone who does it for a little while, it's so much fun when you go through your phone and see all the good times you had during, you know, let's say you join project 90 from the very beginning, look all the way through. There are so many times that are, that are fun without alcohol. So, and yeah, just all good. So what do you, what, what do you feel like you're going to do from here? Like what, how have you, well, first off, my my the, now that I've gotten to the base of why it happened, right, and why it how why I've continued with the struggle of like it did get easier, but if it, but okay, yeah, you slipped off, okay, get right back on, right, and then continue to to have good experiences and and still do the things we're doing. But, you know, to me, it's like the more good times and, and the longer amount of time that it, it, the easier it will become. So that's, yes. you know, so basically it's just get back on. And then the other thing is stay, stay connected, stay connected with, with um, Project 90 and, you know, the group. I think that, that it does, I love to see people who are um, productive and, and happy and, you know, energetic and just the things that everybody's doing is it just makes you want to stay the course, especially just seeing all the good things that happen when people make these decisions to change things, you know, and start living healthy. Mm. Make choices. Choices, not decisions. <laughs> yeah, choices. Play around with that. Play Even though it's just a change in a word, like just play around with the energy of that, like choice. Forward moving decision, cutting yeah. cutting something away. Yeah, I'd love for you to just play around with that because I think that you're it, it, it's a it's only a subtle change in the word or in the in the letters in the in you know in the language, but it's a big energetic shift. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Focus on what you will do. Focus on who you are. Focus on your way of being, mm -hmm. as opposed to cutting away a previous way of being. Mm -hmm. All right. Project well, thank you so much for sharing the story with us. I really, 
No problem. I mean, I, I feel like I learn so many good things continuously. I mean, the calls with Kevin, he's so, he's so knowledgeable, truly. I, I, I mean, and just the basic little things, it may be one little nugget that you get out of that phone call, but you know, just, and just for context for the listener who may not understand who Kevin is, Kevin Schuweiler is the top uh, alcohol-free lifestyle coach at my organization. And uh, he's amazing. Yeah. he does uh, one on weekly one-on-one calls with our clients, uh, including Chanel. Uh, and I wish and- I could have gotten with you more James, but with all these kiddos, I don't get to do the nighttime stuff. <laughs> it's daytime. Yeah, so I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do a weekly group call for all of our clients and members as well. So you, you couldn't quite yeah. make the call that I was uh, I was hosting and moderating. Yeah, but no, it's good. You know, one more quick thing, and then I and I promise I'll be quiet. When you are in the Project Ninety Two, one thing that I saw multiple times is people who leave and come back, leave and come back, right? And it's like the one thing that I gathered from that is if you have a knowing inside of you that this is what you need to do or want to do or choose to do. Okay. You, you were, you just have to do it because everybody that would leave and, and realize it's not all that we know what, what to do and just having the good community support of everyone, it feels so positive and makes you want to do, you know, do the right thing, get better. Have fun. So, yeah. But thank you, James. You're welcome, Chanel. And thank you for sharing uh, a glimpse of your life with us on uh, on this episode of the podcast. Yeah. Chanel Bevelacqua from Frisco, just outside of Dallas, Texas. I'm so thank hurt. you so much. And we'll talk to you next time. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.